Hello there, let's take a look at creating a web intelligence report in SAP Business Objects 4.0. What you're seeing on my screen right now is the BA Launchpad, uh, into which I'm going to log in. Okay, so I have this query panel here, and on the left hand side of my query panel, I have the various classes and objects that are available in the universe for me to report on. Uh, these are the classes, and what you see down here within the classes are the objects so, time period, store, product, promotions, and measures are the classes, and within each classes are the different objects. Now, I am going to pull in here state city and uh, from measures I'm gonna pull in sales revenue and uh, margin and discount I'm going to run this query okay the first thing I'm gonna do here is go and save my report click on save and I could save it in my favorites so only I have access to it or if I have access to some public folders I'm gonna go save this in a public folder here let's say in report samples and webby demo let's call it e-fashion demo save this report Okay, and we continue working on this. Uh, now let's say uh, we want to apply a break on this. Isn't that the next topic here? Yes, apply a break. So uh, let's say we want to apply a break on state. So I click on the state object here and go to analysis and click on break. Now what this will do is it's going to apply a break whenever the state changes. So we have different block sets, it sets of data here for each state. Now uh, to make this the, the state name appear in the center rather than at the top, what we have to do is go back to break go on manage breaks and go to state and here in duplicate values instead of saying display first I'm gonna say merge so what that is gonna do is merge all the rows for the state column and display the state value in the middle there save it once again here okay now uh, I'll actually double click on the sales revenue column here by going in between or going to the line next to sales revenue so that expands the column to include the full name of the heading here. Now what I'm going to do next is do some analysis, further analysis here for which I'm going to insert a sum. Comes to the next row so I'm going to click on the sum and uh, the total here and just drag it up here so instead of coming in the next row it will come in the same row delete that extra row there so right click on that empty cell and then press on delete so now I have actually let's remove the sum we don't want I mean let's remove the text that's saying sum so now we have the sum and 
and uh, we already applied the break let us actually create a variable now so i'm going to create a variable for which we go here to variables right click and say new variable and say let's say sales tax for which i'm going to take sales revenue and multiply that by 0 0.0925 which is what we have in california so i'm going to leave it at that the formula is correct i validated the formula and if I had something wrong there, let's say if I had uh, just something like, you know, into and, you know, something was wrong and try to validate it, it's going to throw me an error there. So I'm going to take that back, click on OK. So now we have sales tax. So uh, let me show you one other thing about sales tax for which i'm going to insert a new report here so right click here and say add report let's drag in uh, state and then let's say city and sales tax you see how I'm getting multiple rows for the same city and sales tax that's because of the way the sales tax variable has been defined uh, it's basically giving me multiple rows probably for the different years now I probably I ideally when it's a measure what you or when it's a numeric value like this what you want to do is you want to sum it up for which let's go back to the variable and uh, for the qualification year, instead of dimension, we are going to say measure. And I'm going to say, OK. And uh, the minute I do that, you see how it automatically shows me only one row. And let's say if I were to remove the city from here, it will further sum it up to show me only one row per state so that is why when defining a new variable you have to make sure you select the right qualification so you know going back to the sales tax variable you see how it's a measure so yep uh, make sure that you have the right qualification for the variable you probably want to mention only for things like city state or let's say name and all that stuff uh, on which basis you'll be analyzing your data but any numeric data should be a measure unless you don't want it to unless you don't want to use it for calculation okay let's go back to our original report what else insert calculations create a variable uh, create uh, variable actually let's drag that variable in here uh, next to sales revenue and yes, to insert a new object or a variable in your table, what you have to do is click on the object here and drag it in. And when you drag it in, depending on whether you want to replace an existing column or insert this in between two columns, you have to make sure that the complete column is highlighted. When the complete column is highlighted and you replace it, I mean, and you uh, drag it in here it actually replaces the existing column and if you were to just uh, drag it in between two columns or towards the end of a column wherein the full column is not highlighted then it's going to insert that column you see here we are now going to have sales tax twice just going to go ahead and remove that again delete okay so now we have sales tax i will show you another way of inserting uh, calculations here i would click at the end here and you see how in this calculation we have sum of sales revenue same way i'm going to click here go to the formula editor up here and i'm going to say aggregate and then say sum s u m some show 
I could just keep typing on the letters in the function name and it'll search for the function automatically. I typed SU and it brought me on sum. So double click on it and we extract it here. I'm going to select sales tax. Click on OK. And once I do that, it's going to sum up the sales tax. Okay, we will save that. What else do we have here? Create a chart. Let's go ahead and create a chart in the second report here. I'm going to delete this entire table. Then let's say uh, state. city and sales revenue I am going to turn this into a chart so basically right click on the table not on the column but on the table for which you select the entire table and uh, turn into column chart so uh, we're going to get different options here. I'm going to say column chart. Okay, so here we have the data here. Okay, it does not show me the state probably because of how. Uh, well, it shows me here, but not really. Sorry, it's showing me the states, but not the city. Uh, that's because of the height of the chart is, or the block where the chart is, is not able to accommodate everything. So let's just go ahead and increase the height. Basically, you go towards the bottom or towards the top. I'm going to go towards the bottom and just increase the height. Once I do that, you'll see that it starts displaying these city names also. So that's your chart on uh, bar chart on, uh, you know, state, city and uh, revenue. I increase the width a little bit to see the complete uh, CD name. Uh, another way of including or another way of inserting the charts is by going to report element going to the charts tab here and say I want to insert a pie chart so I'm going to say insert pie and then just going to click on the portion in the report where I want to see the charts so I'm going to click here just going to give me the structure of the pie chart, the dummy structure without any objects in it. I am going to go in and drag, uh, let's say, sales revenue. And then, uh, which gives me just one color because it's the entire revenue, 36 million. Next, I'm going to drag in the state. That will give me the pie chart for revenue by state with a legend of the different states. Uh, you hover over and you'll see the state name. And uh, that's kind of a simple chart on your data for your analysis. And uh, yeah, that kind of covers uh, everything that I plan to do in this demo. And uh, one other thing I'm going to show you is when you save your report, uh, you want to probably make sure that your report is in a refresh or actually open on refresh mode if the users are not supposed to see all the data let's let's say there's some kind of security on the universe where a user is supposed to see only his or her own data his or her own data or uh, you want them to automatically refresh the report then when you save your report, what you want to do is uh, go to the advanced tab and say refresh on open. I personally do not like to do this unless, uh, you know, you want the report 
you know to apply the security or something like that uh, otherwise i would not do that uh, i would want the user to decide when he or she wants to refresh the data so yep uh, that's that about uh, creating your first web intelligence report and in sap business objects 4.0 and uh, thank you for watching how uh, very soon i'll try and post more demos on this thank you